Hi there. Next up in my mini series of arcade conversions is a conversion of a Sega Classic. And uh, this was originally released by Virgin Games again and then re released on Mastertronic Plus. And the game is Shinobi. Pretty nice cover artwork on this, quite atmospheric. You've got the ninja silhouetted by the sun there and a nice Shinobi logo. Otherwise, it's the usual Mastertronic Plus packaging for this era. But one thing that is notable on the spine is a $3.99 price tag. As far as I'm aware, the only so-called budget release that costs more than £3. So that's quite unique. And on the back we've got some screenshots which, again, aren't going to be the Commodore 64 version. They might be the Amiga version, but I suspect they might actually be the arcade version of the game. Not entirely sure. And you can see they've used a nice Japanese style font there. Enjoy frantic oriental action in the ninja beat em up. Search for kidnapped children. Dispose of marauding thugs with blows from feet, fists, and shuriken stars. Classic Sega coin op thrills. Rather pleasantly, the instructions get right down to business by immediately telling you the loading instructions and the controls for the game. And then it goes on to give you the blurb about what the game's about, uh, with some really terrible puns referring to the enemy character Bua Fu. Um, with the titles Fu What a Scorcher and then inside Food for Thought and Food Fight and uh, that's pretty terrible and I'm sure Sega didn't authorise that but it does say there in order to reach Boar Fu's lair you must fight your way through five missions divided into three or four stages blah 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 it's Shinobi I'm sure you've played it I'm sure you're aware of it if you're watching this review so I won't go into the detail it's Shinobi. So that's the instructions. We've got some foreign language stuff as you'd also expect. And uh, let's wait for the game to load now. So this is the loading screen of the game. And uh, quite a nice image it is there of the ninja looking through his cowl, which uh, is a variant of the title screen on the arcade original. And also we've got some loading music, which uh, again is used in the original arcade game. This time it's used as a loading music rather than in-game music. So here's the game loaded, as you can see the title screen is pretty much similar to the arcade version of the game, which we'll see in a moment just to prove the point. Um, you've got a rolling demo which alternates between the bonus level where you've got to shoot the ninjas, which you can see here, and uh, a little bit of the scrolling first level of the game, uh, which is one of the worst examples of how to play the game I've ever seen because he jumps up here and gets shot and that's the end of it pretty much, and otherwise it just says Shinobi in the middle of the screen there and press fire to play one player game so let's do that in fact let's not do that let's first of all take a look at the arcade version of the game for comparative purposes <laughs> Mission one finished. Welcome to bonus day. Okay, so having seen the arcade version of the game, you can already see some comparisons. But let's get on with the game and see exactly how well it compares. So here we go, this is the first level. First thing you see is there's no uh, mission map or anything like that, it just goes straight into the level. Um, graphics wise it's pretty similar, um, obviously not quite so many colours as the arcade version, but uh, otherwise the animation of the main guy is pretty cool, nice big sprites, and uh, the enemies are similar sort of colours, the, the less lethal enemies are blue, and the guys that shoot you are brown. And there's my first little person to rescue. There you can see there's one of the guys with a the pistol. 
Um, controls are pretty straightforward as you expect, left, right, moves you left and right, up makes you jump, down makes you crouch. To jump up to the level above you have to hold the fire button and then push up and then he jumps up to, in a rather slow kind of a fashion up to the top. Um, other than that, not much more to say about the controls. Uh, the Ninja Magic control is, uh, oh I've got killed there. The Ninja Magic control is uh, the space bar which we'll almost certainly need to use at some point. In fact I use it sometimes just to demonstrate. Uh, the big criticism thus far is that it's very difficult to see the enemy bullets which do kill you if they hit you so you've got to be careful. Uh, also, the sounds are a bit boring. All you've basically got... Oh, I got shot as I was jumping up there. That doesn't seem entirely fair. Um, yeah, the uh, the sounds are a bit naff. It's just a, a kind of a splatting sort of sound when you fire a sh shuriken and when it hits an enemy. And other than that, there's not really a lot going on sound-wise. close and this action of moving up and down is quite uh, sluggish as well which can make it quite difficult right that's all the enemies sorry that's all the children saved on this level so all we're going to do is escape the level which is done by moving off to the right hand side Just get rid of that guy and there's the first stage cleared the background graphics are pretty good Pretty similar to the arcade version as you can see from this example here with the Marilyn Monroe posters. Um, obviously less colours because there's less colours available but all the same, not too bad. Uh, and this level proceeds much as the arcade version does. So in terms of conversion, once again you're not expecting the world from a, from a Commodore 64 conversion but it's pretty good, it's pretty reasonable interpretation. The, uh, the lack of sound is probably the worst problem with it. That's nicely done. And that's the end of that stage. And coming up is the third stage now, which is the end of level boss. So let's go take a look at him. Notice there's like infinitely, infinitely respawning enemies here. So you can really rack up a high score if you want to. As long as you don't want to lose the time limit, but we don't want to do that. Let's get on to the next stage. Stage clear. Get another bonus for the remaining time. And here's the boss of the final part of the first stage. Which uh, is actually much easier to beat in the original stage. It doesn't move around. Oh, I've been killed though there, having said that. Still got a life left. But you can stand quite close to him and avoid most of the things he says and then gets killed again. Let's try taking him on from the back of the thing instead. Oh no, I'm dead again and that's game over. Well, that wasn't very good. Last time I played it, I got past him almost straight away. So let's give it another go. We won't bore you with the first two stages again and just try and get to that end of level boss with a couple more lives remaining. So here I am at the end of the second stage again, um, picking off those constantly respawning enemies. Let's go and try and take on that end of level boss again. And what I really should have used for this end of level boss is the ninja magic of course so let's give that a go see how this goes well, it's doing quite a bit of damage oh bloody hell that didn't go quite as well as I was expecting because the jump jumping up didn't really work too well got him there we go stage clear not the most uh, terrifying of enemies as he doesn't actually move that's obviously a limitation of the program and now I get into the bonus stage where you've got basically got to shoot all the ninjas as quickly as possible which is easier said than done you just keep going for as fast as you can oh perfect done it not too bad and now as you can see it's a multi load and it's now expecting me to load level 2 so I will do that and I won't let you suffer the multi load hell.
Stage two has now loaded. As you can see, it says press fire to play. So let's do that. And much like level two of the original arcade game, there's, this is in a sort of metallic uh, factory kind of setting. Uh, the problem is with the limited palette of the Commodore 64, our hero kind of blends into the background, which is quite ninja-like, uh, but not very helpful in the context of the game. Uh, and it's pretty much the same kind of thing, but the, the main difference is you can switch sort of between foreground and background in this uh, stage. So this guy here, to get to him, I need to go like that and try not to get killed, which I did get killed. Got a few lives left, having survived the previous level reasonably well, so might make a little bit of progress, but I wouldn't count on it. It is a very tough game. It was a tough game in the arcades and remains as such in this version. That's two kids rescued. Again, the lack of background noise makes it a bit drab. Swapping between foreground and background is also kind of tricky in this one, but quite clever nonetheless. There seems to be two just to pick up at the end there, and that's it. Go to the next stage. So there we go, that's another level done. This is actually the furthest I've ever got in the game, arcade version or home version. just actually noticed that player two's got a... A score there, I'm not quite sure what's going on here. Here's some green ninjas to fight, so a little bit of variation in the enemies. Lots of uh, brown grunts in this stage as well. Ooh. And the green ninjas got me. Uh, this background's considerably red. Uh, but at least it's a change from the previous ones. God almighty, these guys are lethal. And I think I'm on my last life now, so it's probably not going to take much longer before the game's over. I shan't be reloading it, so I better round up by saying that it's not a bad conversion. Again, it, it's as good as you can hope for, really, from the Commodore 64. Graphics are pretty decent. That's my last life over, I think. Yeah, game over. So, uh, graphics are pretty decent. Sounds a bit disappointing. Um, this was a 399 game, and if you're a fan of Shinobi, then it's probably a reasonable... Um, conversion reasonable enough to actually warrant buying the game as a 3.99 purchase. Uh, I'm not that big a fan of the game and I wasn't even back in the day because it was so hard in the arcades so I probably wouldn't have bothered myself but uh, all the same a pretty decent conversion continuing the theme of pretty good conversions looked at so far and coming up next we'll have another Namco conversion. <laughs> Dark side. Two. One. Zero.